over-the-air TV. Is it still a thing? Yes, it is. But what's it all about? <laughs> Broadcast radio started in the U.S. in the 20s. But then with the introduction of the television set came a new type of radio wave broadcast in the 1940s, moving images to go along with sound. It stayed this way for over six decades with little change. It was the same broadcast frequencies of television that you could pick up on any TV by plugging into that uh, coaxial connection on later TVs and rabbit ears or other types of antennas on top of the TV or for better signal on top of your house. And while it did progress to color from black and white and from mono sound to stereo, the signal was roughly the same. It was an analog signal that you could adjust, tweak the antennas, even tweak objects in your room that could interfere with it, and get rid of that snow on the image as much as possible. But then, in 2009, the transition finally happened from analog to digital. This wasn't possible for many years. Even though digital video technology was available, they just didn't have compression al algorithms that were practical. It took enormous bandwidth to transfer even low-quality digital video. But then in 2009, it did happen, and uh, they overlapped each other briefly to give people a chance to get new TVs or converter boxes. And the government even issued these $40 coupons to all households. I've still got one that I never used. And what it basically was was a new digital tuner that you could connect to an antenna. Not all older antennas worked, but a lot of recent ones did. And that would pick up the new digital signals. The nice thing about these was that they were much clearer. They were standard definition broadcasts still that were square shaped, but there were also new widescreen high definition broadcasts, either 720p or 1080i. And even after they stopped calling them converter boxes because they really aren't necessary anymore because all modern TVs have digital tuners built in, um, they still sell uh, recorders that are basically the same thing, tuners. Um, here's one that I used to use uh, when I lived in an area that had some signal. Um, it has a digital tuner built in, HDMI output, and it has a USB port that you can put a thumb drive in and you can record high definition broadcast off the television. This was a nice uh, feature to have because you, you don't want to do that through the cable company. They charge you an arm and a leg to rent a DVR and you can't really save stuff for personal use either. The downside was that this signal was not as far reaching as the old analog signals. While the old analog signals looked worse, they could also uh, reach more areas. Even if you got a fuzzy signal, you'd still get something. But with digital, it's more all or nothing. You'd either get it and it would look great, or it would be blocky or pixelized or stop altogether. So in a sense, this new DTV digital television was half-baked, but that was the best they could do. So, it's not over yet. Yet another over-the-air standard of TV is in the works. So anyway, this new standard, standard was called ATSC, and there was a planned upgrade called ATSC 2.0, but that was already uh, outdated before they finished it. So the new one coming up that's going to replace 1.0 is ATSC 3.0. This allows, of course, 4K HDR content, but it also improves on the problematic current signal quality. So you can receive more channels with better quality. At least that's what they're saying right now. We'll see how it actually ends up. They also say you'll be able to receive it on uh, phones and tablets, I guess, once they start uh, building compatibility into it. But also, the, uh, they're planning on having it more uh, computerized, if you will, personalized. Uh, for instance, uh, the ability to send alerts to have personalized advertising. Um, some people are worried about that. I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, personalized advertising, that's more efficient for everybody. Uh, you don't throw unnecessary ad money out there. 
you, which leads to more free content to consumers. Sounds good. We already get targeted advertising on our other uh, internet connected devices, so that seems like a natural extension. But in any case, however, it turns out um, the ship has really sailed on over the air being the huge thing it once was. Um, now that so many people have internet service and have the ability to stream and, and also are uh, quite accustomed to these streaming services that off offer exclusive content. But it also sounds like a welcome addition, uh, this ability to have free high quality content uh, with a more far reaching signal and potential to be more profitable uh, advertising wise. So yeah, it sounds uh, more, more options are always better. So anyway, this ATSC 3.0 um, was branded as Next Gen TV. That's something else that they're uh, trying to call it. Las Vegas uh, became the first to have areas broadcasting this permanently in spring of 2020. And since then, several other major cities have already started uh, their uh, ATSC 3.0 broadcast. And if you go online, you can see the full list of uh, the scheduled rollout. It's happening as we speak. You can even buy tuners for it right now for uh, about $200. But uh, it'll be soon enough where by the time it's actually broadcasting in most areas, uh, they'll be more affordable and then actually start being built into TVs themselves. We'll see how it goes. I'll see you next time. Okay.